How would you feel if you were a woman and you were filled naked without your consent? Now, that's what's happening to strippers across Manchester when a feminist campaign group sent undercover investigators into two clubs in March. Now, a group of Manchester-based strip club workers say that they feel violated. The campaign group not buying it claims the recordings show breaches in the club licensing rules, including sexual acts taking place. They've sent the footage to Manchester City Council, and we're going to be speaking to not buying in a moment. But first, let's listen to Daisy. Her name has been changed, and the words that she's spoken have been reproduced by a BBC producer. Daisy works as a stripper in Manchester and told us that she feels violated by the filming and fears what would happen if that footage is leaked. So I actually started dancing because I can work it round my job. So my dancing is my main income and um, my instructing and doing all my courses and stuff is basically my dancing allows me to do that. So I like the Manchester clubs. Until the filming happened, the Manchester clubs have been great. They're the main ones that I've worked in because I, I do currently live in Manchester. We actually found out about it because I went to work and I was in the changing room and our manager came in and informed us that someone had filmed us. So I was working when it was filming, so I'm on the film apparently um, because the club has a good idea of which customers it was that was filming. Um, and sort of the pieces sort of slowly started filtering in as we learned more about what had happened. I mean, I guess I felt angry, but also terrified because I didn't know who'd filmed it. I didn't know where it had gone. I mean, we were told it had gone to the Times newspaper um, and to the council. Um, yeah, I didn't know whether they were going to post it on their website. Like, you know, I, I don't know who'd seen it. Yeah, it was just, I think... Initially, it was the fear of what happened with this video, and then afterwards it was just like, how dare they? Our biggest fear was it being leaked, um, because, I mean, obviously, I know that people have seen it. People at the council will have seen it, people at the newspaper will have seen it, the, the women the not buying it will have seen it. Um, and it makes me angry that they've seen it, and they have no right to be watching that, but mostly it was the yeah, they'd be leaked and then there will be that kind of video of me online. Guys ask for extras, but we, we don't offer extras. Um, as far as I'm aware, there's no extras going on. Uh, I, I certainly don't offer extras and I don't know any other girls who do. Um, and I think girls tend to be pretty clear about that. When guys say, you know, uh, what else is down there? And we're like, that's it. That is what we do. There isn't any extras. If you want extras, you're gonna have to go elsewhere. When I go into work in the evenings, I know which girls are watching the CCTV that night. I know who's watching it, and I'm happy for them to watch it because I know that they are keeping me safe. That footage doesn't go anywhere unless we need it to go anywhere. It's just there to keep us safe. Whereas this footage, yeah, I can only imagine what kind of footage they have, and I consent to be on CCTV. I consent to it every night when I go into work. I don't consent to them filming me. This industry is legal. It's licensed. I don't understand what they're trying to expose. Like, if they want to understand the industry, come in and talk to us. Nobody has spoken to us about what we want. If they want to help us, come in and talk to us. There is no need for this footage to be anywhere. Like, I don't want anyone to see that footage. I don't want that footage to exist. We have a right to our body, despite what we do for a job, and they've taken that right completely away from us. When I go into work, I feel completely in control. I feel in control of my body, I'm in control of who sees me, I'm in control of what I do. I've lost that control and they've taken that away from me. Now, our reporter, Katie Parvin, led this investigation. Kerry, pardon me, Kerry Parvin led this investigation for BBC Radio Manchester uh, and Kerry's with me now. Well, the girls actually came to you. They did, yeah. So, tell, tell me about that. Well, we've worked with dancers before with Radio Manchester and two of the girls that I've worked with came to me and let me know that they believed that some undercover filming had taken place in and around the Manchester club scene. At that point, they weren't sure who had done it and there was a lot of uncertainty. So I did a bit of digging around, a lot of email sanding and through that I was introduced to not buying it who confirmed that they, in fact, did do the filming. Why do you think that those two girls, including Daisy, who we've just heard, felt that they had to come and speak to you? I think there was a lot of fear and certainly in the Manchester club scene there's been a lot of silence from the dancers and they feel like they don't have 
a safe voice to be able to speak out and air their concerns and air their worries. And the fact that I'd worked with them previously and told their stories, they probably felt quite comfortable coming to me. Now, as we heard, not buying it claim that the recordings show breaches in the club licensing rules, including sexual acts taking place, and have sent the footage to Manchester City Council. Have we got a statement from the council? We have, yes. So, Councillor um, Rabnoaz Akbar has said that an investigation into the practices of two Manchester strip clubs was launched earlier this year following the evidence collected by not buying it. Our officers are nearing the conclusion of the investigation and they will be contacting the management of the clubs in due course. And there are two clubs involved in, in this situation that we're talking about. What have they had to say? Well, we reached out to both Victoria's and Obsessions. We're still waiting to hear back from Obsessions. But um, Victoria's solicitors have said that they have not knowingly contravened or permitted the contravention of their licence and that they're going to cooperate fully with Manchester City Council's investigations. The campaign group not buying it are the ones behind the undercover filming uh, and as an organisation they challenge the exploitation of the porn and sex trade and they work side by side with survivors and many others that get harmed by this industry. Uh, Dr Sasha Rakoff is from not buying it and joins me now. Good morning. Good morning. So why did the filming take place? This took place because we've known, we've had lap dancers speak to us for years about the abuse, the exploitation that is going on in these clubs, the fact that you have to provide sexual contact to even break even by the end of the night, let alone make it £20. We did this because we found probably 100 incidences now in 70 clubs, that's a third of the industry, of this kind of activity, along with prostitution, trafficking, underage girls, serious abuse happening in clubs across the country. We did this because there have now been two court cases where council has conceded for breaching equality law for its licensing of the strip industry, yet it keeps on licensing the clubs. So basically, we had no choice but to go and do what really is the work of the council for it, because they are supposed to go into clubs and do secret spot checks. Sasha, we've, ju we, we've just heard from Daisy, who's absolutely... Abs oh, yeah, go on, OK. The clubs are full of CCTV cameras. Women are being filmed all the time. But whenever the, whenever the, club go, whenever the council goes in, the clubs always are miraculously clean. They never see any rule breaches. They never see any sexual assaults or harassment. The CCTV, if they're given it at all, because it's usually wiped, or it's lost, or it's of such poor quality they can't make out anything for, from it. So really, we've done what the people at Walton Hall had to do. It was not until independent undercover investigators went in, after the, the authorities had gone in a hundred times, that the reality of the situation there was actually exposed. Well, Sasha, Daisy didn't want you there, didn't want you to film her, and feels, feels that you violated her civil rights. She works there. And she feels so strongly about that that she's contacted the BBC. It's not us who are violating lap dancers, it's the strip industry who is no, violating you, you, lap dancers. You, Sasha, you filmed them without their permission. Because there is no other way to do this. If we hadn't filmed them, it would have immediately been dismissed. We'd probably be in court facing a defamation charge. Why didn't you just speak to the girls? Why didn't you just because get in touch? Because every woman in the industry will always tell you, as you probably heard, across the, across the country, every single woman when they're in the industry will tell you it's a great big happy family, it's well regulated, there is no sexual contact, I'm in a safe and protected environment. And we know for a fact, and we've shown yet again, not just in Manchester, but in other clubs across the country, that the, these women are not being protected at all. So you're, say, you're saying that the, those girls aren't speaking the truth? I think you can't speak the truth when you're in this kind of industry, because A, you're scared you're going to lose your job, and the industry makes you feel that you can't possibly do anything else. It totally erodes your self-confidence and your self-esteem. B, you're dealing with some very abusive men who run these places, so you cannot speak out against them. A lot of women who we've spoken to have left are still scared to speak out publi publicly, because they're scared of the men who run these places. What are you hoping to achieve with all this? I want, we want to shine a spotlight on the reality of the industry and what is really going on in these clubs, and the lies that we've been constantly told, that they're well regulated. It's not nothing to do with prostitution, when actually it's putting women halfway down the slippery slope into prostitution, and women are making thousands of pounds just by wafting well, around a Well, according to Daisy, and, and possibly we could have spoken to, to others, that's not how she sees it. She sees it as a job that provides her with an income, and she uses that income to make her life actually better. What are you going to do with that footage? Daisy doesn't even know whether she's on it or not. The footage.
footage is actually coincidental to what the men witnessed, the, in, the private investigators, your ex-detectives, by the way. All that's happened with it, no one has seen it, except it's been sent to the relevant licensing investigators at the councils. They have it under lock and key, so no one else is going to see this. None of the councillors, definitely not the clubs, because all they'll do is turn around and fire any dancers they can identify, because that's what the industry but does all the time. Daisy wants to know if she's actually on that film. She doesn't know. She went to that club did her job that night, so at one point she's naked and she's no idea whether she's on that film. I've no idea if she's on it either. That's the point. This isn't about the dancers. This is about exposing the industry. But don't those girls have rights? Don't they? They. That's their life. She's a working girl. Doesn't she have a right to know whether somebody's filmed her without her knowledge? Like I said, women in strip clubs are filmed all the time. I know no, not, no, no, not without I their knowledge, Sasha. I know of clubs where managers are actually beaming the CCT footage from the clubs direct into their bedrooms. That's your revenge porn. This has not been given to the press. That was very clear in the Times article. They haven't seen it. The first question, including your own producers, ask is, can we see a copy of the footage? And we say, no, don't be stupid. Of course not. Well, somebody's going to see it. The only people who are seeing it are the investigating officers in the council, and then it will be destroyed. Sasha, is your agenda really to close the clubs? Is, 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 your, is that your agenda and the girls and their supposed welfare the, the, the portal to do that? Of course it's to close the clubs. These places shouldn't exist. It's a joke that we have them this day and age. But what we're saying alongside that is every single council must provide meaningful exit support to every single woman who they put at risk by licensing these clubs year after year, but, but despite you're, the abuse that we've shown in You're them. also saying to adult women that you don't have the freedom to do with your body what you wish to do. If you wish to earn a living this way, then you, we, we feel, here at Not Buying It, that you don't have the right to do that. But they don't have the freedom anyway. They have no choice. No, but you're they saying they can't do it. To make £20. Because they don't have a choice. We also know it's full of vulnerable women. But we every don't... single lap dancer who's left has said that every single woman they knew and it was vulnerable had experienced sexual abuse. Sasha, a study in the US suggests we, that one third of lap dancers are in abusive relationships. We, we don't know that, Sasha. We've just spoke to Daisy anonymously. Nobody knows who Daisy is. Her employers don't know who it is. And her viewpoint, her attitude, contradicts yours completely. But of course it does. When you're in the industry, the third thing you have to do is to kid yourself that this is all great, you're in control, you're empowered. It's not until you get out very often that you can face up to the intimidation, the abuse, the harassment that you received at the hands of managers, let alone punters. So that if young, may, so that young woman, out, that young woman who took the initiative to speak to us and to speak to Kerry here at the BBC, then she, what she's saying, we, we've got to disbelieve that. I'm sorry, we were talking across each other. What did you say again? So that young woman, Daisy, who approached us anonymously and gave us this story, you're saying that what she said isn't, isn't valid at all, that we should just... We're here to represent those harmed by the industry. If I may read out some quotes from women, not just who have left, but some women are currently in the industry but are far too scared to speak out. What they say are things like, men are paying you to get naked and grind on them. The only way to make good money is to provide extras. OK, Sasha, uh, Dr Sasha Rakoff is from Not Buying It. Thank you, by the way, uh, for, your, uh, for your presence on the programme. Uh, we would love to hear from you if there's something that you want to contribute to this, even though it's not a phone and If you want to get in touch, you can do. Um, hi, Mike. I'd love to know who funds this pressure group. It costs money to go undercover. Is it religiously motivated? Is it just one person? We should be told. Not buying are uh, doing these recordings all over the UK. This is from Nick, and he said they need investigating. If you've got an opinion, uh, you can always give us a shout. You really can. Give us a ring on 0800 218 Traffic and travel for you. We're going to hear from, from her in a, in a few minutes is, is our reporter, Kerry Parvin. And Kerry's been leading a report into uh, workers in strip clubs who were filmed undercover whilst they were doing the job and feel violated by that. You heard me earlier uh, in a conversation with the campaign group not buying it. We're going to hear from the union that uh, that's part of the protection strategy uh, for these girls. And it's an investigation by BBC Radio Manchester. We've got right through the hour. As I say, it's not the sort of thing, though, you would want uh, your young people to be listening to. More of that, but now time for the Radio Manchester with me, Mike Sweeney. Uh, we've been looking at a story this morning that... Uh, 
that our reporter Kerry had brought to us. Uh, a Manchester-based stripper saying that they're angry and terrified after a campaign group carried out under fil- undercover filming in two strip clubs. We spoke earlier to not buying it who had that footage shot. We're going to be hearing from the United Voices of World Union, which is a trade union that represents workers in the sex industry. All of that on. As I say, it's not really suitable for young listeners, but for me, absolutely fascinating. And more after this. Talking about today has actually generated text from you, which is unprecedented. Normally, within the 10 to 11 hour on the programme, we have features and we have guests, but this is one of the rare features in which you have been in touch with us, with your viewpoints. And I do do want to hear from you. You want to text in, text Mank in your thoughts to 81333. It's difficult to do a phone in because we've already done a phone in, but I've already read some texts out and I've got more to come. We've been hearing throughout this programme that Manchester based strippers say that they're angry and terrified after a campaign group carried out undercover filming in two clubs. Now, uh, not buying it are the organisation they claim the footage shows breaches in the licensing rules such as sexual acts taking place in a moment we're going to hear from the United Voices of the World Union it's a trade unit that represents workers in the sex industry but first let's hear from Daisy uh, her name has been changed her words are spoken by a BBC producer Daisy works as a stripper in Manchester uh, and told us she feels violated by the film and the failures that would happen to her if that footage is leaked. We actually found out about it because I went to work and I was in the changing room and our manager came in and informed us that someone had filmed us. I mean, I guess I felt angry but also terrified. Initially, it was the fear of what happened with this video and then afterwards it was just like how dare they uh i i certainly don't offer extras and i don't know any other girls who do and i consent to be on cctv i don't consent to them filming me there is no need for this footage to be anywhere like i don't want anyone to see that footage i don't want that footage to exist when i go into work i feel completely in control I feel in control of my body, I'm in control of who sees me, I'm in control of what I do. I've lost that control and they've taken that away from me. Now that we heard uh, earlier, but earlier as well, I spoke to uh, to Dr. Sasha Rakoff. Now she's from not buying it, and I asked what her agenda was. Of course it's to close the clubs. These places shouldn't exist. It's a joke that we have them in this day and age. But what we're saying alongside that is every single council must provide meaningful exit support to every single woman who they put at risk by licensing these clubs year after year, but, but despite the abuse that we've shown in You're them. also saying to adult women that you don't have the freedom to do with your body what you wish to do. If you wish to earn a living this way, we feel, here at Not Buying It, that you don't have the right to do that. But they don't have the freedom anyway. They have no choice. No, but you're they saying they can't do it. Because they don't have a choice. Now, uh, Sherry Salme is an organiser, uh, pardon me, is an organiser for the United Voices of the World Union. It's a trade union that represents workers in the sex industry. Now, they've publicly spoken out against not buying and its actions and have compared the filming to revenge porn. Uh, Sherry is with me now. Good morning. Good morning. So, uh, the conversation I had with uh, Dr. Sasha Rakoff earlier, what do you think of not buying and its actions? I think not buying it, coming to the whole conversation from a completely misguided uh, position, they self-appointed themselves as some kind of saviors of women, Uh, obviously women who never asked to be saved by them. Their idea that they can somehow um, magically eliminate the sex industry and uh, everyone would have a great job somewhere else is completely delusional. And the fact that the way that they try to achieve this is by literally filming women naked, or, or let's let's make it clear, paying men to go into clubs and film women naked at work is not feminist and is definitely unhelpful. But they would possibly say to you, and I put to you, that if these girls are vulnerable and are uh, in danger of being abused, that by you stopping or trying to uh, change what's happening, that you're facilitating that abuse. So, first of all, we're organising with workers in strip clubs and in lots of other industries uh, to make their workplaces as safe as possible when it comes to, you know, um, 
how they are protected in terms of their pay, in terms of, of their conditions. This is what trade unions do. And the fact that Sasha Rakoff and others are fighting trade unions uh, in this situation is ridiculous. Um, what I am saying is that women do all kinds of work, not because we maybe like them or not because it's our dream job, but because we have to feed our children and have a roof over our head and so on and pay for university fees and all that kind of stuff. Taking away uh, an earning opportunity for women that might be vulnerable. But might would, not be. would you would you say then that, that none of these girls uh, are vulnerable, that none of them are being abused, that none of them are giving extras to make extra money? So I'm not going to say that none of them is vulnerable. Lots of women are vulnerable in all industries. Uh, that's why trade unions are there. Um, I am saying that you can actually buy sex, actual sex, sexual services for less money in a, in a brothel, for example. And I haven't seen Sasha Rakov or her um, collaborators going down the road from every strip club where there are illegal brothels, which are where women are criminalised, um, and, and fighting them. They're fighting the, um, the legal strip clubs because they're trying to make a point, a political point about where women should and shouldn't work. What do you want, and, to, what do you want to happen to the footage, Sherry? Well, obviously, I, I, I don't know if this fit is because they cannot release it. They will never be able to release it because um, they, it has been obtained illeg- illegally. Um, I think that they're not buying it and other groups should actually speak to strippers and to sex workers and find out how women want to be helped, if at all. Women well, want to work in strip clubs. Well, Sasha Rakoff said that, that it's a waste of time talking because you're talking to frightened young women who are terrified of speaking out, terrified of losing their jobs and terrified of, in any way, uh, affecting the lifestyle that they have. So basically, you've got people that are frightened, so they'll never speak out. That is not true. People at the moment are frightened of not buying it. The 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 people who cause the most damage, you know, we're talking about financial, but also emotional damage to, to women, are these so-called feminist organisations. I am speaking to dancers every day, and people are scared of Sasha Rakov and her gang, not not of not of the you know the conditions that they're working are, in. Are you are you um, saying I, that no but nobody there is not. There's not one young woman out there who's not terrified of a rogue employer. Of course, and this is what trade unions are for. Our members are organising, and it's true, not all of them are prepared to speak publicly, and you could hear Daisy, she is scared, and she's not prepared to speak publicly because of the stigma that is attached to sex work, because while this is a legal um, you know, profession, it's a legal job, People are stigmatized to the extent that they don't want to speak out, which also means that, you know, this idea that, oh, we'll just close down strip clubs and women will find other jobs and everything will be great. This is complete nonsense. People who have been working in stigmatized, criminalized industry for however long cannot find other jobs. So when so-called, again, feminist groups go around and say they're going to close down strip clubs and everything will be fine, they are pushing effectively hundreds and thousands of women into further poverty, into criminalization, into unsafe working conditions in, uh, you know, in underground strip clubs, in Brussels and so on. There are no, um, you know, avenues for lots of these women to find other jobs because they have been stigmatized and criminalized. Thank you so much. That was Shiri Shalme. She's an organiser for the United Voices of the World Union, which is a trade union that represents workers in the sex industry. This whole report wouldn't have happened if it hadn't have been for our very own Kerry, Kerry Parvin, who is a, a reporter and was the genesis of this investigation and is with us now. Just to, as we come towards the end of the hour, what's your thoughts on what you've heard from, from both sides of the, of the story? And, of course, from Daisy's comments... I think the overarching takeaway has got to be about the individual girls. I mean, we're dealing with humans and lives. This isn't just an industry or an organisation. This is people that are earning money for families. This is their career. And I think it's got to be a matter of of safety first. And I think that's definitely what Daisy is preaching. Now, we heard Not Buying It claim the recording show breaches in club licensing rules, including sexual acts taking place, and have sent the footage to Manchester City Council. Uh, Do we have a statement from the council? We do, yes. So they've said that an investigation into the practices of two Manchester strip clubs was launched earlier this year, following evidence collected by Not Buying It, and that their offices are nearing the conclusion of the investigation and will be contacting the manager of the clubs in due course. And a couple of clubs involved, have they commented? 
Well, we've reached out to both Victorias and Obsessions. We're still waiting to hear back from Obsessions, but the solicitors from Victorias have said that they have not knowingly contravened or permitted the contravention of their licence and that they are con- cooperating fully and totally with Manchester City Council's investigations. Kerry Parvin, thank you so much. And just to finish, Kerry, this is unprecedented. We've actually had text through on this subject. Uh, Mike, to me as a man, I feel strange that certain women feel that they know what's best for these strippers and can't seem to accept that in 2019, this is what they want to do. My wife goes to male strip shows such as Magic Mike, and I've never thought the poor bloke feels he's being used. Judging people in this way is a downward spiral. And Vanessa from Bolton said, a friend used to have a job in a strip club a few nights a week, used to work behind the bar. And let's, for the sake of a story, call her Daisy as well, so Daisy 2. But Daisy 2 never had a problem with any of the people who owned or ran that bar. Kerry, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Golden Hour's on the way, two years from the history of rock and roll music. 